Alright, so you started the Australian tour in Perth the other day. How was the show? Uh, the Perth show, first Pennywise show of the Oz tour was awesome. Oversold out. Um, obviously, it's been four or five years since Jim's been down here with us. And the uh, 25 year anniversary, I think everyone was ready to explode. It looked like everybody had a couple drinks in them, and it was like Thunderdome. That, the, the club's cool, and it, it just was a really good way to kick off the tour. We were really stoked on it. So you've had a couple of days off since the show. What have you guys been up to? Um, doing interviews on our day off. Just kidding. Uh, actually, yeah, yesterday was a travel day, so we got up, you know, with hung, hung over from the Perth show and got on an airplane and flew over here and went out to a good steak dinner uh, in Melbourne at a place called Rare. Actually, really, really good. Everyone was super stoked on the on the food. And then uh, today, it was supposed to be a day of walking around, eating, and enjoying. And then we found out we had like ten interviews to do. So basically, you're you're not ruining my day, but your my day off is not a day off. It's a day with you. So so far, it's pretty good because you're you know you're all right. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, yeah. So on the tour, you've got uh, face to face and the Menzingers playing with you. Um, is it good to be playing shows with such great punk bands? Yeah, I mean, I think in this day and age, like, you, you got to have a strong lineup. There's so many bands touring. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, you haven't, we've lost a lot of record sales, so there's not a lot of money generated like the old days where you could basically tour when you wanted and get a royalty check. So I think there's a lot of bands out there that are touring and touring and touring. So there's a good show, like, every night in every city in the world now. And you better come with a, a strong package. In the old days, you'd throw on, like, three of your friends' bands that were were whatever, no one knew who they were and it didn't matter, you know? Um, but now you gotta have, there's a lot of competition, so I think it, it it's something that we always wanna do. We always wanna play with bands we really like and bands that are, you know, powerful, gnarly bands, and so now we have an excuse to bring someone like Face to Face, Messengers, like it's, uh, it's, it's a great lineup. Obviously, Face to Face has been one of our favorite bands for you know 20 years, so we're really stoked to be playing with them. Couldn't couldn't ask for a better you know uh, co-headliner. I'm going to say co-headliner. That probably probably get in trouble for that. All right. So Jim re, uh, rejoined the band late last year. Uh, what prop prompted that decision? Uh, we hadn't talked to Jim for a while. I hadn't talked to him for three years, and. I just sat down with a beer, we sat down for a beer with him and we kind of just hashed out some problems of the past that we had had just as friends and just said, hey, you know, let's put the past behind us, you know, I want to be able to buy you a beer when I see you out at the bar and vice versa. And we just, you know, talked about what's important and, you know, for me, like, uh, you know, my family, my friends and Pennywise are the most important things and, you know, we just kind of mended our the, the fence the fence a little bit I had to do a little bit of self inventory I think and take some blame take some responsibility for my role in, in him leaving the band for, for a few years and uh, at the same time we were kind of repairing our friendship uh, Zoli the, the guy that was out there you know filling in for Jim basically um, he decided he didn't want to have a back surgery that he needed and he wanted to do it on his own and do rehab and and not do the surgical route and didn't, he was going to be out indefinitely and we really started to get the feeling that he he didn't really even want to be in the band at that point he wasn't making a priority and he asked us uh, maybe you could get Jim to fill in for me and we were like have you lost your mind like you're filling in for Jim like if Jim come, ever wants to come back to this band you're out of a job you know and and uh, at that point you know everyone had been talking to Jim and we're like hey you know Zoli's you know not He's not like, we don't know when he's going to be coming back. And obviously we've, you know, repaired our, healed our, mended our fences. And, you know, if you want to come back, you know, obviously you, the door is, the door is open for you. And uh, he was like, wow, okay. And he thought about it and he's like, all right. Um, you know, we had to talk and work a bunch of, you know, stuff out, small details. But within a, within a month, we were back on stage together and it was just, it was awesome. You know, it's how, it's how it should be what it is. Jim is the singer of Pennywise. He, he's the guy that everybody grew up listening to and he's the guy that should be on that stage. That's his, you know, his throne up there. All right, so how is being in the band now compared to like coming up, leading up to Jim's um, departure from the band? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's much, much better. When, 
you, when you're in a band for 20 years or any relationship, whether it's with a chick or at your job or you know in a band on a on a sports team, you're going to have conflict. And we got to a pl place where there was a lot of conflict, but there was no resolution and there was no communication. Um, and it just like got to a point where no one wanted to piss anybody off, so no one says anything. And then the animosity just builds up inside, and everybody doesn't get a chance to like get it off their chest and that eventually exploded and, and it wasn't a good ending like no one was happy there was no closure there was no like talking there was no sorries or, or you know anything really no goodbyes and so him coming back we were able to like address that stuff and just say hey look let's not let this happen again let's you know we know the mistakes we made and from now on we just communicate you know if you're upset about something talk about it now get it off your chest and let's figure out a way to solve the problem and live in the solution rather than harboring all these resentments. So it's been awesome. It's like it's like back to the old days on stage. Uh, we haven't started writing songs yet. Hopefully that goes smoothly as well. But like being together and hanging out and, you know, drinking beers and going out to eat and everything, it's like it's like it was, you know, ten years ago. So it's really cool to have that ability to everyone to say, hey, we all, we all were, we're all at fault, and we all forgive each other, and let's let's move forward with a positive attitude. And there's a lot of bands out there that are never going to do that. You know, they're going to hate each other, and they're going to they're going to talk shit about each other, um, and that's not a healthy place to be. Period. So we're really stoked on the vibe, and I, it feels like you know we made it this far, and we went through a couple really big things. You know, Jason dying, our original bass player, and then. Jim leaving and being able to put all those pieces back together feel like stronger than ever, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so you're celebrating 25 years of Pennywise this year. Um, can you believe it's been that long? Uh, you know what, it didn't even dawn on me. Like Jim was like, you know, we started talking about coming back. Um, he's like, yeah, it's our 25 year anniversary. I was like, whoa. You know, I keep thinking it's been 20 years. And 25 years, there's, it, I don't know, it's, it may, I guess it makes you feel kind of old, but at the same time when you're in a band, time kind of stands still because you're you're you know you're up there and you're feeding off the energy of the crowd and, and you got 14 year old kids to 40 year olds in your audience and you kind of just don't you don't have to grow up when you're in a band it's like the perpetual party like every night's a saturday every night's a friday and uh to be even con consciously understand that we've been doing it 25 years is mind-blowing I mean, it's you know it's half more than half of my life has been spent pennywise so I guess it's a pretty big accomplishment to be a band for 25 years and to come to Australia and be selling out shows and having fans like pay that same respect and, and be loyal to us. It's a pretty, pretty amazing uh, feeling, you know, to, to, and it, very humbling and like very, very, we're very grateful that we've survived this long. You know? Never in our wildest dreams do we think we'd be around for 25 years. So what do you think you can credit your success to over such a long period of time? I, I think it's like keeping the fans in mind and not and not you know behaving like rock stars. Like I think a lot of bands lose sight of of why they're here, and you know a band gets bigger and all of a sudden they they double their ticket prices and they're selling you know raising the price of their merchandise and all this kind of stuff and not and then not being accessible to their fans. You know that you know everyone's got their own bus or they're got a limo picking them up and you know it's just like. It turns into this thing where they they start thinking they're better than their fans. You know, they're they're entitled to more, and we're just normal guys. You know, we're just we don't have any expectations. We we don't think we're special. We're just you know we we love playing punk rock. We're I mean I wouldn't even say we're I mean I'm I, I'm not a very good guitar player. Like I just you know I play any of my songs good. So I have no reason to think I'm special, and I think that's what the fans. Uh, recognize about Pennywise is that we're just normal guys that like to have a party and we like to make the fans feel like they're part of it because without them we're nothing and so their energy that they give us and their support is what keeps us alive and I think them knowing that and us always staying true to our roots and writing songs that you know have a certain meaning behind them and not you know turning into a reggae band or a ska band or a pop punk band and always you know sticking to what we believe in a lot of critics will say, oh, it's the same old Pennywise album, you know, just a bunch of the same, and that's what, that's what we want to do. So I think sticking to that formula has kept us 
in the game for a while and just not forgetting who we are, where we came from, and how important our fans are. Uh, so can you reflect on how the punk genre and scene has changed in the past 25 years that you've been around? Uh, it's changed quite a bit. I mean, punk rock started off as kind of like a fuck everything, fuck you, we're going to destroy everything. And, and there, it was a really nihilistic it, movement. I mean, there wasn't a lot of positivity. It was mostly like just letting it out, you know, screaming and yelling and anyone that listened. Then you had, you know, um, the straight edge scene which came along, which is more focused about positivity, bad brains, you know, it, that kind of shifted a little bit. I mean, now you got emo and, and these other things that are happening, but I think punk rock kind of evolved, in, uh, evolved into like a, a combination of everything because we tried to bring a positive message. I mean, you know, I'd say the height of the scene was like 80 to 83, and that's when you had Black Flag and the Dead Kennedys, you know, and, and Minor Threat and all these bands playing. And when we came along, bands like, you know, Bad Religion were putting out Suffer, and it was like a more intellectual type of punk rock. And I think uh, the scene was just a lot more violent, a lot more dangerous at the beginnings in the 80s. And it was just like, you, heavy metalers didn't like you, the cops didn't like you, your parents didn't like you, your teachers didn't like you. Now punk rock, you know, you got like Green Day and Offspring like selling, you know, 20, 30 million records. It's Punk rock's become a household name. It's become an acceptable soundtrack for, for movies and, and TV shows. And it's just a lot more commercial now, you know? But I think there are a lot of punk bands out there that are still keeping it real. And I think there's a lot of young punk bands that are keeping it real. So I think it's, you know, it's good and bad. Like anything that's cool usually gets ruined by, by corporate greed. And as soon as somebody, you know, you take skateboarding, like it was this underground or skateboarding backyard pools and, and streets and building ramps, and everyone's like, oh, you know, this is, this is unacceptable rebel sport, and now it's, you know, a multi, multi-billion dollar industry. You know, surfing was, was frowned upon until, you know, it became commercial. And now punk rock has been commercialized by, you know, major labels like grabbing up bands like Green Day or Offspring and, and blowing them up. So um, it's changed a lot, but at the same time, the energy from the kids and the roots of it is all still there. So when we walk out on stage, we feel the same way we did you know, 20 years ago, basically. So having accomplished so much for such a long time, what's next for Pennywise? Um, right now, we're, I mean, just we're really stoked to have Jim back and, and be able to like put all of the past aside and move forward. But uh, we're working on a 25-year anniversary box set, which is going to hopefully include like a bunch of outtakes that no one's ever heard. Um, uh, hopefully, a few new songs and DVD, everything, photos, the usual usual box set. We've never done that before, and with 25 years worth of material, I think we're going to have a good one. And um, after that, we're going to start working on a new record, and hopefully, have like a new record out sometime in 2014. And and uh, just keep keep rolling. I mean, we feel good. We feel healthy. The fans are there. You know, they they're, they haven't not turned their backs on us, and we're just looking forward to doing it as long as uh, people you know keep supporting us. We're, we're just stoked. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak to MHTV today. Thank you.